Hey players, today we're going to talk about how to reinvent yourself, and I have a very special guest, Alexandra Villa... I, I, you gotta help me say your, your full name. I was watching a bunch of your videos practicing, but I can't do it. <laughs> it's Alexandra Villavuel Abrego. A lot of times people will um, take take what other people are suggesting and you know kind of roll with it even though it may not fit for them. So today we're going to talk about discovering what your passion is, understanding what you care about and how to kind of manifest that into something positive and inspiring in your life that can go somewhere. So I think you are a shining example of someone who's been able to do that. Uh, just recently, I'm going to link up your video, I saw you talking about how you started your business five years ago and everything and you know so just talk about that, talk about where you were in the beginning to where you are now. Yeah, well, in the in the last video that I did this week, it's um, it was about the number one secret to success, right? And I really think you know, over the years as a, as a life coach, what I've I, I've done in the videos and in the programs that I have is I always share you know different techniques and strategies for success. But I really realized that over the years that the the number one technique and strategy and secret to success is really like perseverance, right? Endurance. It's just not giving up. For me, I started when I was nineteen. Uh, my business now it's going to be about like six years almost um and i really started from nothing you know it was just an idea one day that i had i remember i was in the shower and i had the idea to to, to write a book and it just started okay let me just write a book and then after that slowly i really think that the universe kind of sends signs your way to to guide you to your 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 path and what you're meant to do in the world and I just started listening to the science and everything. And for me, when I started at 19, I was in a place of my life where I had no idea where I was going. Uh, a year earlier, I had moved into an apartment with a friend of mine. You know, I don't, I'm not going to take too much time in the story, but it's just that for a year, we were just partying, having fun. We were working for full-time jobs. It wasn't like a, uh, an amazingly paying job and it wasn't also a bad paying job, but it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Uh, at that point, since I had left my mom's house, I knew going to school wasn't even at some point like an option because it was expensive. So I couldn't afford that. And anyways, I knew that in school there wasn't going to be anything that would be really interesting for me. Uh, so it was a, a period in my life where I was very confused and I was lost and I didn't know where where I was going to go and what I was going to do with my life. And it's, it just started really with with that idea and pursuing that that thing and just not giving up really. So, so when you first started, uh, it seems like your passion and, and everything you've built kind of just like, it was kind of like a snowball. It kind of started to roll into it. It started with you writing the book and everything. Uh, what, what was the first thought that popped into your mind when it came to writing a book? Why did you think a book was the best form to maybe put that idea out there? I, I think that also, because a lot of people say, you know, what, okay, what's my purpose in life and what's my passion and all of that. And I would say you, you've always known. I think that when we were kids, when we came to the world, we kind of knew um, what we were going to do. I think, you know, for kids who were saying, let's say I'm going to be, um, uh, for, for a little girl who would say, I, I want to be a nurse when I'm, I grow up, or I want to be a singer when I grow up. And very often, I really believe that the first thing that you said from the moment that you started to think about what you wanted to do, it was kind of what inside of you, deep inside of you, kind of your soul knew that you had to do this. Now, it doesn't mean that you were, that, that your soul knew that, okay, you were going to be a singer, but it just means that you liked what being a singer meant. Maybe it was to inspire people. Maybe it was to see the smiles on your mom and dad's face whenever you would sing. So that reaction and that, that what, what, create, what it created into the world it is what you're supposed to do. Now, being a singer is not maybe what you're going to do later on in life and what your, your career would be, but it would be something that would create that reaction into the world, right? So I always say how, let's say Lady Gaga, her, her purpose in life is not to, to, to be a singer. Her purpose is in life was to inspire people, to inspire people to, to it's okay to be different and to, to love yourself no matter what and all of that. So if she would have been like an accountant, I'm pretty sure she'd still be doing that as an accountant, right? So right. it doesn't really matter what the career is. I think what really matters is what you bring uh, to the world. But I think what you said is really important on, on the idea of your passion doesn't have to be tied to a specific position. Your passion is how you choose to represent yourself in whatever kind of field or, or, or you want to go into. Um, I knew when I was little, from the very beginning, from, from the beginning, when I started writing, it was always something that I loved doing. I think that, uh, you know, for me, I, I own the business. I'm a life coach. I'm a speaker. I'm an author. But I think that uh, in the bottom of the deepest 
corner of my soul, what I really love to do is to write. You know, I, I do it no matter what, whether it's for work or if it's, you know, if I'm alone in my, in my bedroom and I'm writing in my diary. I've done that since I was like, since I started writing. I have diaries from, I remember, like, I still have them where it's just like a page of me saying, aujourd'hui, well, in French, like, today was a really good day and I love my mom and my grandma and my grandfather. You know, the end. So that was like the page of the day yeah. in my diary when I first started writing, right? So I, I think that when I said that day in the shower, I'm going to write a book, it was already everything I had been through through life. And from the moment that I was a kid, I, I it was preparing me for that. You know, I had like seven diaries already written. And I mm -hmm. said, I'm just going to write a book about the lessons that I've learned in life. Like I felt like I was at a point, even if I was just 19 years old, I felt like I lived a lot. And I've learned a lot of lessons. So I said, I'm just going to write a book of lessons and stories. And it just turned into a self-help book. And then it turned into me finding out what life coaching was and, and doing the course of life coaching that started a business and all that. So really, to answer the question, it, it, it was just, I was already being prepared for it. And we are all being prepared for something, whether we realize it or not, you know, whether we know it or not, we're all in the midst of preparation for something greater than what we think. Anyone who's surely trying to discover their passion there should just kind of look at their behavior growing up, what interests them. Everything you said is really on point. I think for a lot of um, so a lot of my audience is high school kids, middle school kids that are starting to come into age, and even early college kids that are starting to discover who they are. And I think there's a lot of influential voices around them saying, "Well, you need to focus on making a lot of money, or you need to focus on popularity, or focus on." stability and there's all these different people making decisions for you so uh, for you how do you feel like you were able to balance other people's input with your own drive like at what point did you take input from people and say listen maybe that works for you but that might not work for me one thing that I was really I guess blessed with was the fact that I had a, I, have, I have a wonderful mom and she um, she came to Canada at the end of her 20s And she, even though she had studied back in Bolivia, she, when she came here, her studies and, you know, her years in university were worth nothing. So she had to start as a cleaning lady and she had to just, you know, then work, work, work herself up, work, you know, in, in, in that field. But then after that, she found a job at the bank and uh, now she has been working. She's actually retiring this year and we're all very excited, but she's been working for, uh, for 25 years, right, at the bank. And she always says that it's not, you know, her passion. She, that's why she's retiring very early because she's like, I, I, she hates her job. And I remember growing up seeing her at, at night coming home at like six o'clock and she would leave the home at like five o'clock in the morning because it was far And she was always tired and always like just not happy with, you know, what, like a, a, another day at work with stress and everything. And she would always tell me, you know, no matter what you do, I just want you to be happy. Just, you know, find something that's going to make you happy. She was like, I don't want you to be in the position that I'm in uh, later on in your life and being like, you know, I'm miserable. She's like, I don't care if you go to university. I don't care if you go to college. I don't care about all these things. Just, you know, do something that you really love. So that 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 was really good for me because I didn't really have that pressure of of having to follow that you know what society tells you to do to go to college and university and all of that and graduate and get a job so for me when when I first started really this this journey and started my business and all of that obviously there were people I remember I, I, at that point when I started and my mom saw me really given my 100% to that and she saw that the first years it wasn't necessarily working the way that I wanted it to work Uh, you know, she was like, you know, maybe you should get a job, baby. You know, why don't you go, yeah. go, go find a job, go leave your, your CV, you know, to some places, you know, maybe you should go back to school, you know, come back to, 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 to my house, you know, come live with me again. And it's fine. You know, I'll pay for everything and just go to school. And I was like, no mom, this is, you know, this is my life. This is what I want to do. Also people in my family, they all thought I was crazy. My friends, when I first tell, told them that I was going to write a book, they all started laughing, you know, like it, it, it so obviously there was going to be a lot of doubts And I always say society doesn't teach kids to be employers. It teaches them to be employees. Um, mm -hmm. You know, school, it teaches you to, to work for someone, really. So I think it was, it was difficult, definitely, going through that. And anyone who wants to, to live a life that's not what society tells you that you should live and have, it's going to be difficult. But I think that once, you, once that vision is implanted in you and you kind of create this idea of what you want for your life, It, it doesn't stop you, you know, it's, it's like the video that I did this week, it's really all about perseverance, I really think that. Yeah, I think that it's amazing when 
um, you can kind of come into this mindset where it's like you know what you want and you're going to go for it. And regardless of the negativity you may experience around you, you just kind of you're very focused. And it seems like you you've focus has driven you to to go where you need to go. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, you, you mentioned your mother and everything. Do you feel like in a way she was kind of a mentor to you, or like and also mentors in general? Do you think it's important to have some kind of a mentor to help you? Either if it's someone that you maybe look at their process of how they got to where they are or someone in your life that you can seek for strength. How, how do you feel about mentors? I think it's very important to have mentors. Um, for my mom, she wasn't my mentor in this field because obviously she's not doing what I do. But she was my mentor of what a good woman is. And, you know, me just seeing her being really a good woman all of her life, you know. Uh, that was she was really a mentor when it came to that mentoring me to become a good woman. Uh, yeah. Same for my grandparents, you know, growing up with them, watching them. You know, I, I have a very uh, the way that I think is very old school at, at times. So and, and I think it's the influence that my grandparents had on me. Um, when it came to mentors in my field, for me, I remember when I started one person that I was always, always following and listening to his videos. And I loved him so much. It was Les Brown, uh, the speaker. And I absolutely loved him. And I remember I used to email him every day. And I was like, I want you to mentor me. And I, he responded once, I think. And he was so sweet. He was just like, you know, I believe in you. You know, I guess it was like a, a template. <laughs> he just, he just, I was like, oh my God, he responded to me. Um, but I really wanted him as my mentor. But obviously, he was going to be expensive. And I was 19. I was starting my business. I didn't have money. So I couldn't afford it. So I think for anyone who's in that position, very often we want some mentors. If you can either afford them or if they are willing to, to mentor you without any fees, go for it. Because that's amazing the amount of time that you're going to save and the amount of money that you're going to save doing that because they really allow you to not make the mistakes that most people make, right? Uh, but if you don't have the resources to have a mentor, for me, what I used to just do is, is I was a personal development junkie, you know, I was reading books and watching videos all the time and, and taking courses, the, the inexpensive ones, of course, and just like cons constantly trying to, you know, there were so many people who were mentoring me without even knowing it because I was just completely obsessed with their careers and their journey and what they did and how they did it. Uh, so, so yeah, so I think it's definitely very important to, to do that. And I think, you know, for you, let's say in your work and in what you do, you are a mentor to thousands of people, right? In the world. So they are watching your videos and getting inspired by you. So without realizing it nowadays, we can easily find mentors or be mentors, you know, it's, it, and that's, what's beautiful about the internet and about the time that we live in. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, it's so important to, like there's so many free resources out there and so much knowledge online that you know it's always good to have a one one on one but you know let's say you can't afford like you said there's a wealth of knowledge on the internet out there there's great people like you who are inspiring everyone you know there's a lot going on so <laughs> both of us yeah <laughs> uh, uh you know i think and i think one thing that a lot of people may get discouraged about is um the amount of time it takes to really kind of like turn things around you know it's like some people will invest a year and feel like okay I've wasted a year of my life some people two years some people five years ten years it, it all depends you know um, what, what, when would you say for you was the point where you started to kind of have that aha moment where it's like okay things are starting to pick up this is something I can realistically do and I can run with there were a lot of aha moments like uh, I, there were a lot of, of little moments that happened I think when I, when I first started, so I wrote the book. I'm, I'm trying to go back in, in the first aha moments. I wrote the book. Um, then I became a certified life coach. Then I started the business. And naturally, it's, I think it's in my personality because I'm a Sagittarius. I'm very positive. Like, I always try to see the positive thing. But like sometimes too positive. Like Sometimes like just like the world could be ended and I'd be like, but it's okay. Because I'd be <laughs> like... <laughs> So yeah. it's kind of so I guess that helped me right to to to, to always see things that things were working even if maybe they really weren't right. Uh, one of the the things that really happened that that made me be like oh my god this could really work. I will always remember it was April of 2010. I put my first video online and I put it on Facebook. I remember at the time because I didn't know about the world of YouTube. And I remember the day after I was going to New York and I remember I woke up in the morning at like 4 a.m. to to to, to go to New York. And going on my phone, I think I had like a Blackberry at the time, I don't remember. 
but seeing all the notifications and seeing that people were sharing the video and commenting and liking and I was like oh my god this is crazy like this is this this is happening like people like people and it was more here in Montreal so it was like locally that people were watching and a few days later when I was back from New York I was walking downtown and people were recognizing me but like not just like one or two it was like five people six people who were stopping me for autographs and pictures with just one video so I was like what what happened I was like what happened here like what, what something happened like something is weird you know so that was a sign then after that I had no signs for a while a year later I put my first French video on YouTube um, I remember the night I went to, at that point I was making videos, but you know, not, not very often, not in a consistent basis. And when I put the video in French on YouTube, the day after I woke up and it was at, I remember when I went to bed, it was at like 800 views and I was so excited because it was the first time I was getting that. So I was like, oh my God, this is so fun. I was like, imagine I get to a thousand by tomorrow. That would be crazy. And then I woke up the day after and I was at 9,000. And then a few hours later at 20,000. And in less than two days, the video was at a hundred thousand. It went viral. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but I just remember I was like, okay, this, this is a sign. Like, this is crazy. Why is it, why did that happen? You know? And it was just like little signs like that, but that doesn't change the fact that, you know, that was what uh, a year after I started the business that that happened. It doesn't change the fact that it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Right. Uh, I was, I, I had lost my job because I was given, you know, my 100% of the business. So they fired me uh, that I had at the time. And at the same time, I had purchased my condo. So I was, I, I got fired. I moved in a month after. So every two weeks, the mortgage was passing through my bank account and I did not have a job at that time. So it was really, uh, that was what, 2011? It was like a good eight months of, of me just stressing all the time and just crying and just not knowing what was going to happen and and being like what should it like it was really a, a difficult moment because I didn't know I was like should I go there there you know, what do I do like I had no idea what to do uh, but you know that that I think it's like I said in the video this week it's, it's actually good that I did that <laughs> that's this week that we did it I said you know I think life really sends you tests you know once you know exactly what you want and what you're going for and what's What's that, that vision that you have? Well, life is going to be like, oh, so you think you can have that. So you think you can do that. Let me test you. Let me see, you know, if you can actually do it in the bad times. If you can, if you can really survive the bad times, because it's, it's really hard. It's really difficult. So, so yeah, so there will be little signs, but you have to notice them, right? A lot of people would have said, oh, I don't care if the video is going viral. I don't have money right now. I'm so mad. Let me quit. But no, me, it was like little signs like that, that I was still like, okay, this it's, it's going somewhere. Like I, I can feel it. Something's going to happen, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. I think to, to have that self-awareness uh, for when, to, to catch those little moments and, and know, okay, that, that that's something I can, that can keep me going. Even when, like you said, when times were tough and you were kind of like struggling to take care of everything, uh, to, to hold on to that hope is, I think, is an amazing thing. And I think, I mean, it, it, it I think you would agree with me on this that like having a goal or a vision for what you want to do also helps drive you. Um, wh what would you say is a good basic goal for someone to have? Should someone have a goal to, uh, you know, make a lot of money? Should their goal be to be happy? Or what would you say is is a is a good starting goal for someone who is in the moment where they're like, okay, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I want to start working towards something. What is a good like standard goal for someone to have? That's hard because it depends on everyone. I always, I'd say in my uh, online program, ABA Academy, I always say that the four human needs, because it is ABA Academy and there's four programs, I always say that the first program is love. So one of the human needs is we all need love. Whether it is love from, uh, from a family member, whether it's love from your friends, whether it's love uh, from, you know, anything, just the, the energy of love we need. It. We don't necessarily need it from a relationship, but just love. Uh, we need purpose. We need a sense of purpose. So we need that we are, we need to feel like we are important, like we're bringing something to this world. Uh, we need then to, uh, to have security. So security, whether it is, you know, personal security to feel like you're confident in yourself, but also at the end of the day, making money and all of that is because we want security and freedom, right? So we, it, money is nothing. It's just a piece of paper, but we all need to have that security. You know, if, if like I remember 2011, I had no idea how I was going to pay my mortgage. I had no idea how I was going to go to the grocery store. I had no food at my house. Like it was, it was bad. Like it was really bad. 
So when you feel that sense of uh, that, that you don't have security, it's hard to be happy, right? It's hard to like be like, oh, life is great. You know, I feel so good about myself. No, you do not have security. And then the last one is growth. You need to feel like you're constantly growing. So I think if anyone, if everyone in the world, if in schools they would teach this to kids, you know, base all your life decisions on fulfilling the needs of love, of growth, of purpose, and of security, I think the world would be so much better. I'll also I'll always say that uh, one of the most important things for me at this point of my life is peace of mind, it's love, and it's freedom. You know, that's that's the three things that really, really matter. Because at the end of the day, and I know, like you said, you know, the, the people watching right now, that they're maybe in high school or college and everything, and with today's society and what they you know, social media and everything, it's all about, you know, the, oh, well, I think it's always been like that, but the fancy cars and the big houses and the, a lot of followers and, you know, being f famous on the internet and all of that. But at the end of the day, all these things, they really, really, really don't matter if you don't have love, security, uh, purpose, and growth, you know, if you don't have these things, and if you have your peace of mind and your freedom, it all, it's, it's worth nothing. But unfortunately, what I've realized over the years is that people will never even if you tell them that they still they're going to be like hey yeah, yeah, sure 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 okay i want to make more money now or i want to be more famous now you know so it's until they actually experience it and they realize that uh and i've also been through that through a point of my life after when i started to really make a lot of money and to come back home and to be completely alone and to to you know go to bed and feel like cry myself to sleep and be like you know, why am I feeling so incomplete if I worked so hard, you know, for these things and now all of a sudden I don't feel happy. And that's when I started, that's when after that I started to create AB Academy because I realized, okay, there's so, you know, uh, people work towards their, their desires and their goals instead of thinking of how can I fulfill my needs. So I realized that my needs were not fulfilled, but my goals were being fulfilled, which is okay. It's great. It's wonderful. But at the end of the day, if your needs are not fulfilled, all those goals and everything, it's worth nothing. That's why all the so many people who are famous and rich, they commit suicide or they get into drugs or alcohol because they don't feel that sense of fulfillment, which is so important. So I think it's all about that. It's all about going after your, your the fulfillment of your needs instead of going after goals and specific things like that. Yeah, I think that's incredible. I think that's amazing to hear because a lot of times people get so hung up on... Uh, the, the metrics of things rather than the actual value that they're bringing and the value that they're receiving from what they're doing. So I think it's important, like you said, to kind of take life in that kind of mindset. Uh, the last thing I wanted to kind of talk about is, okay, so as, you, as you're working to build yourself up and, you know, you're trying hard, let's say everything comes crashing down, it doesn't work out for you, it flat lines, you lose everything. I mean, at what point do you decide to give up on that dream and move on to something else? Or is it just keep pushing, keep grinding, keep trying, even if you don't really see it going anywhere? I think that it's all, um, you know, the, the, today's uh, topic is about reinventing yourself. I think you can reinvent yourself, but still be in the same thing. You know, I, I, I know for me, even if things would come crashing down, at the end of the day, I still have my, my peace of mind, I still have my freedom, I still have my love. Um, so I don't, it wouldn't, it's not that it wouldn't matter, but it's just that I would either continue, but I'm pretty sure, to be honest with you, I would continue. Like, I, I know me. Like, I'm very, very persevering. And I would be like, oh, life, you're trying to test me? Well, watch me. Let me Watch me do a comeback, right? Or you just move towards another another thing. Like, I often see, as a life coach, right, I, I see um, uh, uh, sports players, right, who have injuries, and they can't play anymore. And, and that's a difficult situation because even if, you know, being a life coach, oh, you know, you just have to think positive and let's put the goals. No, he can't play anymore. His career is over. His lifelong dream is done. There's nothing that you can do about it, right? So that, that when, I, when I see that, that makes me think like, okay, you know, there's moments where even if I tell him, no, just be perseverant, you know, just do a comeback. It's just not going to happen, right? The guy, it's, his career is done in sports. But that doesn't mean that he can continue being the light that he was in the sports world in another field, right? So he can take everything that he was and what he was bringing into the world, maybe inspiring the world or motivating the world or being someone that people looked up to. He still can take that and do it in another field, right? So he can maybe start doing conferences and speaking in front of people. He can write a book about it. He can uh, go to schools and help kids. You know, he can teach and mentor. There's, that's, that's what's wonderful about life is that it's never 
uh, when you think that it's over, when you think that it's done. No, it's not. It's like just the beginning. It's the beginning of something amazing and something great. So I think that there's two ways. It really depends on the person. If you feel deep inside of you that you should continue and that, no, it's not over and let me persevere. And if it's realistic, right? Like I said, if, if you really can, then you can. You need to also, you know, use your brain and not be like crazy and be like, oh, I can do it. But if you can't, it doesn't mean that it's the end of your life. It just means that it's the end of a career. But a career, it's, it's not what matters. It's what you do with that career. It's what you bring to the world with that career. It's the value that you add to people's lives. That's really what matters. So I think that that would be my answer. <laughs> cool. So, I mean, for anyone that's never checked out a channel before, I'm gonna, I want you to just kind of explain basically what your channel is, what you do, give the audience kind of a rundown. My channel is called Alexandra TV. Uh, I've been doing videos for a few years now, but on a consistent basis, I believe that I started like uh, last year or something like that. I do videos in English, French, and in Spanish. Uh, on uh, Tuesdays, the video in French comes out. On Wednesday, the video in English comes out. And on Thursday, the video in Spanish comes out every single week. Um, and it's a channel about personal development, about growth, about life coaching. It's, uh, I would say it's all about inspiring and empowering you to love life, others, and yourself. That's really what it is about. Uh, I'm actually very excited because at the beginning of January, I am starting another uh, series or s segment, I guess, on my channel. It's going to be called Alexandra at Home, and it's videos about recipes and organizing and things like that because that's another... For a long time now, I've been having this feeling of do that, do that, you should do it. Because um, obviously, in my professional life, I, I love what I do. I, I love life coaching. I love my business. I, I absolutely love it all. But one thing that I absolutely love to do also is to get home and prepare a nice good meal and to organize my home. I'm so organized. I love planning. I love organizing. I love decoration. Uh, all these things are the other side of me that I absolutely adore and love. And anyone who comes to my house, they're always like, oh my God, like if this doesn't work out for you in a few years, like if, if you see that it's over that career, you should like do uh, interior design because you're really good at that. And it's just things that I really love and also cooking and everything. So it's going to be Alexandra at home every Saturday, starting in January. I'm going to do a video, uh, again, in the three languages, three videos about about that, about uh, me being at home and just doing these little things, lifestyle videos, I guess. So it's going to be Alexandra TV during the week and Alexandra at home during the weekend. Thank you guys for checking this out. Um, if you guys want, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want, definitely check out our channel for more personal growth advice and you know, both of us are here to teach you how to be your best self, so make sure to check out her channel, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next week. As always, love and peace.